Hey everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club starting off the new year with a new case from Cougar. This is the MX660 Mesh RGB. Cougar's been cranking out the RGB cases lately. Uh, I just finished reviewing the Dark Blader X7, which is an RGB case, and then there's the MX410G RGB. So the MX660, of course, follows suit with uh, RGB capabilities. Of course you can see the VK120 fans there, or fans, sometimes they have one, sometimes they have multiple. We'll have to see which one or which situation this case has. And then uh, I've got an Aqua 360 cooler. We'll see if that fits in here. I've also got a 280 millimeter uh, cooler from Cougar. We'll see if that fits. I haven't really looked into it yet. And then I've got this uh, GEX 850 Power supply from Cougar. I just finished reviewing the GEX850 and the BXM850, so you might check those out. Taking a quick look at the side of the box for the specs. Let's see, uh, it's mid-tower. We've got the full array of motherboard support from a very small mini ITX all the way up to a, uh, an EATX, which is an extended ATX. So that's a pretty good size motherboard. CEB is also uh, very large. Uh, there's your hard drive support. So we've got two of the larger standard three and a half inch drives we can go five plus two uh, solid state drives those are the two and a half inch drives uh, cooling fan support so this answers the question looks like it does come with three pre-installed 120 millimeter rgb fans so that's good or you can put two 140s in there if you like top we've got uh, space for three 120s or two 140s rear there's a 120 and it looks like this is nice you can add a 120 millimeter fan for hard drive cooling right above your power supply, looks like our power supply cover. Uh, total number of fans, eight. And here's the water cooling support. Okay, so 360 uh, in the front or top, all the way down to 120, so we cover the full range all the way uh, up to, or including a, a 280. A lot of cases don't do that. They'll cover 120 millimeter on the width, but we've got 140 and 280, which is good. And uh, RGB case, so. It uh, looks like that 360 millimeter Aqua 360 will fit. All right, taking a quick look at this, I got the protective plastic off the side. This peeled off real easily. Sometimes, sometimes that can be a real pain. All right, so taking a quick look overall, we have a full side glass panel. There's a little black trim around uh, the perimeter there. The front, now this is an uh, a full front mesh case. That's why it's the... MX660 mesh, of course, and uh, I can see all the way through to the back of the case. I don't see much in the way of anything that's impeding the flow, so that's a good thing. A little bit of a gap down here at the bottom for additional air to get through. Uh, the back is solid. Looking at the rear, there is no rear exhaust fan, but there are the three in the front, but nothing in the rear. Uh, it is adjustable so you can slide the fan up and down in case it's interfering with a radiator at the top or the radiator and the fans. So you can adjust this fan. It is a 120 millimeter. We've got our seven slots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, this does have the ability for a vertical mount GPU. And a lot of people are concerned on other cases that I've reviewed with this distance right here because if the front of your graphics card is really close to the inside of this glass, you don't have a lot of room there to pull in fresh air. So that can be a concern. So I'll look at that in a little more detail. And it depends on the graphics card too. Some cards are uh, more friendly to being vertically mounted and the clearance there is uh, more or less critical depending upon the card. There's where the power supply goes. Uh, looking at the top of the case, it does come with this uh, mesh filter panel, magnet around the perimeter. If we look at the top of the case in a little more detail, you can see the top is completely vented and we've got mounting slots all the way along for either a 280 millimeter or 140 millimeter radiator or fan or a 120 and the full length of 360. So we'll see how nicely that fits in there, 360 millimeter radiator. It doesn't look like there's a lot of room so it might be it might be a little on the snug side. And then looking at the bottom, so there's that gap I was showing you earlier to pull some fresh air in from the bottom. Uh, there is a full 
removable mesh little filter panel here. And, and you know, I know why they do these. This is a very inexpensive way to do this. Of course, they're trying to keep costs down, but uh, sometimes the problem when you go to take these off to clean them, when you do that, all of the dust flies off and kind of goes everywhere anyway. So uh, I'm not a big fan of these. I mean, they're better than nothing. It is fully ventilated though, if you need to get air in there. Looks like there's plenty of room. And then we've got the four little rubber feet here at the corners. It's got uh, a little rubber insert. And it looks like we've got about an inch of clearance underneath the case, which on a hardwood floor or a tile floor won't be a big deal. If you have carpet, if your carpet's very thick, sometimes you gotta be careful because if the case sinks down into the carpet, sometimes that can block off the airflow uh, to the bottom, especially to your power supply if you have the fan facing down. And looking at the I.O. panel in a little more detail, there's your RGB button, which would cycle through your RGB functions. Microphone, headphone jack, a uh, USB Type-C 3.1, and then a couple of USB uh, 3.0 ports there, and then your regular power button. But you can see how aggressive that mesh is. It'll be interesting to see the fans all lit up there when we get the system all powered up and there's a protective if I can get it off there a little protective plastic across the logo that there we go peels right off nice and shiny you got to give it a pretty good yank from the bottom but this front panel here does come off and again that mesh is really aggressive definitely get some airflow through there all right so there are the three Front RGB 120 millimeter fans. It looks like, yep, this is a filter panel that is, uh, okay, clips on there. And it looks like there are some magnets that, yep, stick to it. So there's your removable front filter panel. Now we can see the fans a little more closely and it looks like there is a little bit of adjustment of course when you stack all three of them like that I guess you could move this one down a little bit if you needed to and then the slots here on the sides are for 140 millimeter fans or a 280 millimeter radiator if you wanted to put one of those in the front and then all of your IO or your cables come through here alright so now I'll get the side panel open now it does use the non-retained screws there. I'm not a real big fan of those. I've gotten spoiled. Used to be those were only on your expensive uh, high-end cases. And they've slowly trickled down to your less expensive cases. So you get spoiled by seeing those. But when you don't, it kind of makes you miss them. Okay, so there's the full glass panel. And looking inside the case, first thing I see, step back there so you can get a better look in there. First thing I notice are these SSD hard drive trays. So it's got a little spring-loaded clip there so you can mount your hard drive in there. Snap it in position. And they actually give you a couple of access holes here to run your cables. I've seen a lot of cases that don't do that. They have these nice drive mounts and then they don't give anywhere to really run your cables conveniently. And there's a nice vented section. You can put a fan there to push air down on top of your hard drives. If you want, the fans are four pin, which is nice. The other thing I see here, we have some nice grommets and it looks like, you know, if the edge of your motherboard uh, goes just past, here's the last set of studs. So your motherboard, even on a, um, on a full size ATX or a, an extended ATX, which will put the edge of the motherboard over in here, a lot of times, uh, these holes will be so close that you have to bend your cables around to get them through there or they're like way over here and it looks like they actually put these in a good location so we'll see when we get the motherboard in there if that's really true and it looks like there's a fair amount of room here again the top of your motherboard is going to go right around here so we have a fair amount of room for a radiator and some fans a lot of times in the top of the cases uh, when the radiator and fans stick down you run into issues hitting the um, usually your RAM modules that stick up on your motherboard. So, let's get the 
panel out here and look at the back. And uh, this is nice and deep here. I'll have to measure and see what that is. So that is, uh, yeah, it's about an inch deep. Which is nice, because the more room you've got there to route your cables, the easier it is. And here is your little controller hub for your RGB effects. And it looks like, okay, so this is your SATA connector to power up your uh, lighting control board there. And then these are what would interface with your motherboard if you do the synchronization between the RGB of the case and your motherboard. And a lot of motherboards do that now. Here's the uh, hard drive tray. This is all plastic, but you can see it has mounting provisions in here, four little screw holes for a solid state drive. If you wanted to put a solid state drive in these trays, this is the hardware kit. We'll look at that here in a moment. And the nice thing about this uh, hard drive cage is you can remove it completely. Those are screws right there. So if you flip the case over, you can pop those screws out if you wanted to take that drive cage completely out. And nope, it doesn't go all the way to the top. So sometimes they have uh, screws that come in from the top that you have to remove to get the cage out. But it looks like they're just uh, one, two, three, four. Yep, four screws and that'll come out. So that would give you a lot more room if you don't use any hard drives down there to uh, stash any cables from your power supply. All right, so that's about all there is to see back here. Of course, you got your I.O. connectors. There's your Type-C USB and then your motherboard control hard drive activity light, audio, and your USB 3.0 connector. And inside the little hardware box here is your little user manual. And it has the same specs that were pretty much on the side of the box there. Looks like we've got several languages. And what I like about these is it shows a nice exploded view. So if you have any question as to how things fit together or what is or is not removable, you can sort of use that as a guide. And then there's a list of all of the hardware items and then all of your cables, what they do. And there's your little bag of screws for your motherboard. And it looks like it's got some fan screws there also, as well as some standoffs for the different motherboard configurations and some little rubber isolators. All those kinds of goodies. All right, so now, I can really start building the case up and we'll see how well I can get those radiators to fit in there. And time for some quick words of wisdom. If you use a modular power supply, and I do recommend that because you only need to use the cables that uh, are necessary for your system, but you want to get those figured out and plugged in ahead of time because once you get your power supply mounted in there, there's usually very little room if you forget to plug something in. Uh, it can be very difficult to get in there. A lot of times you got to take your power supply back out. Now, if you have this hard drive cage removed, if you're not using it, then you do have a lot more room to get in there. But again, if you figure out which cables you need and get them plugged in ahead of time, you'll just save yourself some headaches later. And the motherboard is installed. This is the Asus Z390E Gaming. It's one of the Strix motherboards. And the CPU is the 9900K. Now, if you're new to building computers, one thing you don't want to do is get the first screw in and then tighten it all the way down. You need to leave all of the screws loose as you put them in, get them all started because you probably will need to sort of shift the motherboard a little bit to get all of the screws started. And then after you get all the screws in, then you can snug them down. And now that the motherboard is in, I'm going to put a 280 millimeter radiator in there. It's the um, Aqua 280 from Cougar. And just sort of get it in there. I'm not really going to hook it all up to the CPU. I'll just get the radiator up there so you can see what sort of clearance there is. This is the Cougar Aqua 280. So you can see from the top, it takes up most of the top. And I sort of showed it, worst case, if we put the inlet and outlet tubes 
as far to the right or the front of the case as they will go, you can see you are limited by the fans. Now you've got plenty of room at the back. Now I'm not saying you need to put the radiator in this orientation. I'm just showing it to you so you see what the clearances look like. And there is plenty of clearance here for RAM when the radiator and the fans are in there. Uh, it's just even with the edge of the motherboard, so we don't have any concerns there with that. And of course the pump here would sit on there like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, flip the radiator around to show you if you want to put this end, which doesn't have the uh, inlet and outlet lines on it. Uh, we'll flip it over to here so you can see how close you can get. And now I have the radiator flipped around so the cooling lines are coming in on the left. And you can see how much clearance there is. And the reason I can't push this all the way up against, I can't push these fans up against here, uh, if I wanted to, I can't because this slot right here doesn't allow me to push the radiator uh, any further to the right. So that's as far to the right as I can go if I leave the top fan in there. And again, I'm not saying you have to mount it this way. I'm just showing you if anybody has a question. And of course, if you push the radiator all the way to the back, uh, you might have to slide this fan, your rear exhaust fan, down a little bit. But as I showed earlier, these slots back here allow the rear exhaust fan, if you put one in there, to be shifted down a little bit. And then your pump, of course, when you put the radiator in this orientation, you sort of have to twist these lines to get your pump to fit in there. It can be a little, a little tricky. If I were putting this in there, I would probably put the cooling lines uh, on this side if I were mounting this radiator in here. And for anyone wanting to see what the 280 millimeter radiator looks like, I pulled the fans out, the three front fans, and put it in there. And you can see you could shift it down if you wanted to, but I sort of like it in the top position there. And again, you have to find the way the lines want to twist. And actually that would, that would fit quite well there. So you could see that's a nice natural position there for the pump and the radiator if you go with a 280 millimeter. So I got the power supply uh, installed back here and before I get the radiator in there I'm going to put the 360 millimeter uh, radiator. I'll put it in the front and then the top and I will get it hooked up. But I want to talk to you about uh, the graphics card and it has a vertical GPU mount here that I mentioned earlier. And what you need before you can do that is you need one of these special cables. And this one here is from Fractal Design, but it's called a PCIe extension cable. These things range from $30 to $50, $60. It just depends on the brand. But you have to purchase one of these. And you notice it has uh, some holes here. So there's a little mounting slot there. There's another slot here and a mounting hole there. And these mount to the floor of your case right on top of the power supply right in this area uh, and that secures it. But before you do that in this particular case, and I need to move the camera up so that you can see what's going on, uh, this particular case, uh, if you do want to use a vertical GPU mount, you have to take these little solid state drive mounts out. And the reason for that is there are these two tapped holes and those holes coincide with the base. So this end here plugs into your PCIe slot. So usually there's some standoffs that look just like your motherboard standoffs that go behind the screws there because you don't want this touching the base because there are all these exposed solder connections. But anyway this would sit right there and I'll see if I've got some standoffs and then your graphics card would sit in there like that, or very close to that. Now this style with this blower motor here, some people call this a blower card, some people call it a reference card, but this particular style will pull air in from here and blow the hot air out of the case, which I think works best because you know that all of the hot air is being removed. Now the graphics cards that have two fans or sometimes three smaller fans, uh, they will do a great job at cooling your graphics card, but they're dumping all of the hot air that they removed from your graphics card right into your case. 
which uh, just means that you have to make sure you have enough fans in your case and enough airflow passing through to get the heat out. Whereas this one here, it'll still dump a little bit of heat into your case, but not nearly as much. All right, so I have the graphics card plugged into this extension cable and you have to take this bracket off of the back of the case and pop the two little, uh, these little block off plates, pop them out. So anyway, this goes on the back over here on the left and then your graphics card. There are actually a couple slots, so it's a little tricky getting everything in there. But after you get it in and everything just sort of pops in there together. So that's roughly the orientation that the graphics card will sit. So I'll get the screws in there now. Well, the card is in there and it's pretty firm. It does move a little, which is why it's a good idea to secure it. However, this particular PCIe cable, I get the lighting in there a little better, does not line up with the holes that are pre-drilled in the case, which means if you do get a PCIe cable, you would want to research a little bit and try to find out what the hole pitch is. You could make something to work here. You just need a little spacer, a little plastic spacer. But um, the big question that people usually have is the clearance between the intake side of the graphics card and the glass. And I just measured that and it's about, it's going to be about 19 millimeters roughly, which is about three quarters of an inch on this particular graphics card. And this is an older GTX 770. Uh, a lot of graphics cards today are very thick. They'll protrude way out into this free space that I have with this card. So again, something you need to look into if you want to go with a vertical GPU mount. And now I'm at a point where I need to make some of the connections to the motherboard. And if I were smart, and that's rather questionable, I would review the documentation here in the user manual. So I've got the manual here flipped over from uh, where it showed all the fasteners and stuff like that in the hardware kit. But this actually shows you where all of your hard drive mounts are and how all that goes together. So it's always good to glance over these. But here it shows also your uh, fan and radiator mounting. And it does make a note here that your 360 millimeter top mount needs to be 30 millimeters uh, maximum. And thickness. Now, I don't know if that means, I guess it just says radiator. I don't know if that means radiator and fans, but I'll find out here real soon. Uh, most of the radiators I've seen are 25 millimeter thick. At least the all-in-one coolers are that way. But anyway, the task at hand here is to get the controller hooked up. So this sort of walks through how to do that. And I've got, uh, let's see, I've got two different modes. The first mode is you push the RG button, RGB button on the top of the case for one second. The second mode is you push it in, hold it in for three seconds, and that switches it over to the motherboard synchronization. So that is good to know. And there is a section here that does talk about installing the vertical graphics card. It talks about removing the two little drive cages there for the solid state drives. And then it talks about the little standoffs that you will need. And now it's time to get the Aqua 360 ARGB, which stands for Addressable RGB. Uh, we'll get that installed, and like I said, I'll get the radiator set in the top and set in the front so you can see what it looks like. And I still have to review this, but I'll do that in a separate review. All right, so I have the radiator installed in the front, as you can see, but you'll notice there are no fans behind it. Because what I figured out is the fans that come with the radiator, which are right here, fit in the front. And I already test fitted the uh, front cover on there, so there is clearance to put fans in the front. Now that leaves the fans that come with the case that were in the front. I'm starting to put them in the top. So there's one, two, and I haven't got the third one in there just yet. But you could put them in a push-pull configuration because they leave you with this nice gap at the bottom just for that purpose so you can get fans on there. But it has been my experience that there are really uh, very few benefits to the push-pull. It looks cool, but as far as cooling, it doesn't seem to make 
a huge difference. A degree, maybe two, maybe. So I'm going to opt to put the original front fans up here in the top. So we'll see what all of that RGB goodness looks like. All right, that took a little while to get all those fans and RGB connectors run to the right place, but I got it all powered up. Everything seems to be working. And uh, I'll get this front cover on now. And there it is with the front cover. That really looks nice. Although I'm unable to put the filter panel on there to keep dust out. So that's sort of a trade-off. And now everything is synchronized with the motherboard. So you can see the fans at the top. And those are actually the original front case fans. And then these are the fans that come with the Aqua 360 in the front. So I'll get the side panels on now. I have the Ada 64 stress test cranked up to put some heat into the system. And I have the front fans. I have all the fans cranked up to 100%. And we'll check the decibels. And this is sort of a worst case. Now the back, there's no fan, so it should be. A little quieter, which is not really a surprise. But this is sort of the worst case. Again, with the filter panel out and just really the front fans, which are almost up against the front, not quite. You can really feel the air pulling through there. That gives you an idea of the sound you may expect if you run a system set up similar to this. And it's time for a little thermal camera work here. And it is about 20 degrees Celsius in the room. Try to maintain that temperature. And we can see a little bit of heat being pushed out the top. Looking at the front, really the only warm spot you see is where the fan motors are in the center of each fan. Come around the side, it's a little misleading because that's the glass, so that's the heat from me reflecting off the glass. But looking at the top of the case, and the color isn't the uh, necessarily the temperature, it's just the differential in temperature from a warm spot to a cooler spot. And looking at the back of the case, this is the rear exhaust vent where there would normally be a fan but there is not so we can sort of look in there and the red you're seeing is the heat from the motherboard components and there's the little io panel on the back of the motherboard over here is the vertical gpu off to the side there and then at the bottom of course is the power supply of course it's a little warm there since we're stressing the system and then looking at the back side of the case here, this is the panel behind the motherboard. So that red area represents the area right behind the CPU, which is of course where we would expect to see a little bit of heat. It's not much, but it's enough to show up on the camera, of course. So that was the thermal imaging. Overall though, if you have a system similar to this with three front 120 millimeter fans, 2000 RPM, the three original case fans in the top, the 9900K at 4.9 gigahertz is maintaining a temperature around 57, 58 degrees Celsius. And there it went down to 56, so it sort of bounces around a little bit. So let's just say somewhere between 56 and 58 degrees, so we'll call it 57. Now with the system still overclocked, I backed the fan speed down. So the front fans, which were running about 2000 RPM, they're down to about 1100, so they're much quieter. You can still hear them, but they're definitely quieter. And then I backed the top fans down from about 1400 RPM down to about uh, 800. So 
I'm just checking to see what sort of temperatures I'm seeing and right now I'm seeing about 58, 59 degrees. So it's gone up a degree, two degrees with a much more livable sound. Let's see what the Yeah, that's, that's much better. I just realized as I was stitching all these video clips together into the main video that I forgot to show the radiator in the top. So this next clip will appear a little bit out of order, but at least you'll get to see the radiator in the top. And the radiator is now installed with the coolant lines at the front. And like I was showing earlier, the front fan there will not fit. So all three of the factory case fans are now mounted to the front face of the chassis. But there is room behind this front panel. So that's a good thing. Now if you do go this route, a couple things to keep in mind. You do want to put the fans on. Uh, attach them to the radiator before you put this assembly in there. Because you will not be able to get to the back screws to attach the fans that makes the radiator a little more bulky and a little trickier to get in there but it will save you a lot of headaches and i'm running the same thermal stress test and i'm getting the same temperatures so that just says that it really doesn't matter if you put the radiator in the top or the front for this particular motherboard and cpu combo the performance is the same and looking at the decibel levels with the factory front fans, again, these are moved uh, to the front face of the chassis and the uh, dust filter there is removed. So So that gives you an idea of the sound levels there uh, with this particular radiator and fan arrangement. And now I have the lights out so we can see what everything looks like in the dark. There are the top fans. Again, those are the original front fans that came with the case. Let me come around the front again. Yeah, it looks very nice. Pricing right now, it's kind of all over the map. If you go on Newegg, this thing is around $133. If you go on Amazon, I just saw it for like $84 or $89. And I think $89, $84, right around in there, is a fair price for it. I, I think $130 is, is uh, a little too salty. It's a nice case, but uh, it's more in the $85, $90 range. If I were to stay with this setup, of course you lose your front, your front filter, so you're going to be blowing dust out of it a little more often. But I would probably add a rear exhaust fan just because I'm used to having rear exhaust fans. But at this price point, given the feature set and what you've got here quality-wise, I would give this the Overclockers Club Gold Award. Post any questions or comments, I'll get to them as best I can. Thanks for watching. This is Chris with Overclockers Club. Don't forget to subscribe.